Hello again there YouTube. Right, well it's uh, just May 2011 now. Uh, starting to get some nice uh, summer weather. Uh, a little bit early for Wales, but not going to complain. Uh, so it's about time I give you guys a bit of an update here. Uh, a couple of things have changed. Now, for those of you that saw my uh, last video, which I recently took down, um, the big deep cycle battery uh, on, the, on the shed system has died. Uh, we have tried changing the electrolytes, um, charging it and whatnot, but we can't get that to work, so pretty much now. It's very, very heavy, so we're going to be trading that in for scrap at some point. So right now, the solar shed system is back to its relatively original 70 amp hour deep cycle battery. Uh, and where the old big one was, we've just got a nice gaping hole at the moment. Uh, with the battery connectors, well, it was temporarily covered in uh, some plastic gloves, but until we do get some new, uh, a new big battery, that's, well, relatively permanent. But they're not going anywhere. Uh, just make sure they don't touch one another. And the connections themselves are solid anyway. Um, so, yeah, back to this battery for now. Good news is the system is now more than keeping up, so uh, no more dead batteries, no more low voltages for the most part. Uh, it does seem to all be down to that big battery. I can only think it must have been dead when I bought it, or just didn't have much life left in it. I mean, you can see now we do have a low voltage that showed up uh, at one point, but generally it's not bad. I mean, 30. Well, about 40 watts coming in right now, but literally that is just... That's because the charge control is just flicking on and off, because battery is full. Um, just running these lights, well, for the video, and just to burn up some excess power. Uh, and as you'll see in a minute, we do still have this reserve plug here, and this is mains going to the house. And very soon we will be putting a grid tiber there, and I'll explain more now. Uh, last couple of months, uh, we've decided that, with the exception of possibly a new deep cycle battery and a grid tie inverter, uh, the shed, or solar shed, is finished. So, we started on a new project. Um, now, especially after getting our fingers burnt with that deep cycle battery, we decided to make things a little bit simpler. Now, just excuse me a minute while I try and climb up to the garage roof one-handed. <laughs> May have to put the camera down for a second just so I can get up here. All right, give me two seconds. Right, okay. Now, originally, uh, we had that big 80-watt panel uh, and that 20-watt panel for the shed. That remains the same. Uh, then what you guys also saw uh, was as a little side project. I had this little panel here, which I've just got wired with very, very cheap wiring just up to my bedroom. Uh, literally, just runs a light in my room, charges my phone. I mean, I think it's only about 2-3 watts rated. Now, what's new, or part of what's new, is this. That is two 80-watt panels joined together in parallel. Uh, giving us a grand total of 160 watts potential worth of power. Uh, now, as you may be able to spot, they are a bit wet, even though it's a lovely sunny day. That's because I've just given them a nice clean, because uh, they were a little bit dusty. Uh, now, with these, my dad made the frame again, uh, all made by hand. Uh, it's quite heavy and was a little bit of a struggle to get up here, I, I will admit. Uh, and we've linked them together, hopefully you can see this, uh, with these little double adapter plugs we got off eBay. Um, now we did have some trouble, I will admit, uh, with a seller from China. Essentially we've got a double adapter plug here, and then we've got these long leads that are now running into the garage, where I'm going to show you something in a second. And what we found, I'm not sure if you can spot this on the camera, but these are MC4 leads. Now one, looks slightly different to the other. Now even though they are MC4 leads, 
I'm pretty sure one of them is actually a fake because one of them did not uh, fit properly with the rest of the wiring system uh, which caused us to get basically no power uh, and after a lot of swearing and a fair bit of fault finding uh, it turned out to be the, the connector now I managed to do a bit of a bodge just with a pair of needle nose pliers just to get the electrical conductivity there but it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit annoying when you spend all this money uh, do all this wiring and it comes down to some little cheap uh, connector that's causing you problems so right well these are the bad boys uh, these cost about £320 for the panels themselves um, and then about another 100 for the frame which we built ourselves uh, all out of wood um, so it's looking around about two pounds a watt which isn't too bad now I'll take you back down go into the garage and see where it's all wired up I'm just going to put my camera in my pocket for a second so just bear with me yeah. don't particularly want to be falling off the roof on YouTube not unless somebody wants to pay me a bunch of money for a funny video All right, still with us? Okay, so if we just go through here, we'll go into the garage. Uh, as usual with the garage, we've got a bunch of junk. But at the back, if you can just about make it out, we've got that wire there which comes from the shed along the roof and then down. And this comes to here, the little RCD plug taking power down to the shed. Now the next thing we're going to be buying is a grid inverter for the shed so that we can bring power back up from the shed down there to the house. Because um, just like last summer we got excess power at the moment. Um, and yeah, until we do get a bigger deep cycle battery it's definitely going to waste. But on a separate thing, we now have this, um, a grid tie inverter. Um, so we've got the big panels on the roof. Uh, I've got a hole which I drilled kind of behind this panel. You can't really see it. Um, bringing the cables down. Uh, still need to put a bit of sealant on that when winter gets here, but for now it's fine. That's going into a standard 240 fused switch. Now, this is actually only... 12 volts or about 18 volts you know depending on the sun um, but found it works fine it is quite tricky getting these thickness of wires wired up in there because it's, well, it's clearly not designed for it uh, at the moment we have a 13 amp fuse in there um, I worked out 160 watt with a panel really I want to have a 15 amp fuse but you know it works out okay um, with this I can flick it off uh, so if I want to do fault diagnosis or look stuff up, that's fine. Um, and then the grid tie inverter itself, it's off eBay for about uh, 80 pounds. And it's rate 350 watts, I believe. Yep, 350 watts. That's got a little kettle lead coming around here through a little power meter that I got. And then this, my dad, he's an electrician, he's wired this in. This is a standard mains plug, and that's, it goes behind all this paneling straight into this fuse box, and then straight into the house. So anything those two big panels make goes straight into the house. And as you can see, the grid tie pulls 0.2 of a watt, just keeping itself going. Um, do I'll just flip this off a minute. Now, for those of you that say, oh, well, if you've got one of these, you're going to electrocute some guys on the grid when they're working on it. Not true. If I flick the solar panel on, the grid tie will give us a fault light. It will not turn on unless it detects grid there. So if there's a power cut, they're working on the lines, something like that, this switches off. Doesn't endanger anyone's lives. Um, if I flick it back on, it is pretty much just gone midday, it's about half past 12 uh, midday in Wales 
and it's May the 3rd, I think. And let's see what she's making. Now you'll see the power will gradually go up just as it kind of gets in sync with the grid and the panels themselves. Um, now I found that it, it tends to peak around about 115 to 120 watts. Now you can see here it seems to have settled at about 113. Now this is on a clear blue sky. I mean, you cannot get better than this. There is a slight bit of cloud, but that is it. Um, now I do still need to get a separate meter for this, uh, so I can measure the amount of amps and watts going in versus coming out. Um, unfortunately, because of the amount of amps, which I worked out it should be you know, at least 10 amps, if not more, um, 15 amps is what it should peak at, roughly. Uh, oh, you can see it's just dropped down now. Cloud went by. Um, so I'm going to get a separate meter, just like we've got in the shed, or just an analog amp meter, so I can measure it. Um, I can't use my voltmeter because that's only rated at 10 amps and well if this thing's pushing out anything more than 100 um, you know it's just going to blow my meter and if this is pushing out you know 114, 115 you know even if this thing was 100% efficient that's still more than 10 amps coming through these cables which obviously is not 100% efficient um, but yeah so that's looking pretty good now um, long term plan is my dad wants to buy two new panels every month now so 160 watts every month uh, until we get to a thousand watts worth of power um, so in terms of the internals here uh, we've left room we can put a bigger fuse in here and if need be we can always reroute it and have a second switch and then because these are stackable literally we're just gonna put another one there another one there you know, until we run out of room. Um, the only thing I would say on these, uh, I'll flick it around so you guys can see the brand of this. Um, hopefully that's the right way up for you, it's the wrong way for me. Um, they're rated at 350 watts, at least that's what the sticker says. Um, now I did, before I put this in, I connected this up to a 24 volt source. Basically I got two of these sealed lead acid batteries fully charged with thick cabling and I wired it straight up. Um, now I wasn't able to measure the power going in unfortunately but it should have been optimum I mean fully charged batteries um, and this was only pushing out 210 220 watts so you know it, effectively even though it says 350 uh, at least from what I've tested it can only put out about 210, 220, and that's with a known good source. So, child, the next 160 watts we get, we'll buy another one of these as well. I mean, we'll just keep the power going into the various grid ties at a low level, just to try and get the most efficiency out of them. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else now. Oh, yeah, uh, one final point. The only thing that kind of threw me off a little bit was the fact that when I ordered this, in the box it came in, it has spare uh, electronic components. Not just a spare fuse, but actual internal electronics, which is a little bit unnerving that they <laughs> think their product is so reliable that they have to include that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, like I said, the next, the next upgrade is going to be a second one of these, specifically for the shed, so that when it's making excess power like it is today, that will come up this cable and then go into the grid through this socket. Um, chances are I'll get a second meter so we can see what each one's doing. And then beyond that, uh, we'll be getting more panels on the roof, more grid ties, and yeah, um, pretty much we're kind of going to, we'll be going away from battery based solar just because we've got our hands burnt on the shed. Um, I mean, we, we probably will replace the deep cycle that the shed has, um, but that'll be it. We're not going to buy any more batteries. Um, not too worried about being self-sufficient, you know, in terms of power going out. Um, so, you know, having a backup isn't so much of an issue. What's important to us is uh, actually just putting some power back in the grid.
thought you'd see the panel there, but obviously not. Anyways, thanks for watching my videos. Uh, and as usual, any questions, please feel free to ask.